We've talked about the production designer's vision, and we've gone over what an art director does on a movie. So next, we need to examine the workflow process of the set decorator. And for that, I'd like to use Leslie Morales, who is a set decorator, and examine what she did on a recent movie that she was on, a movie called Stoker. And um, as a set decorator, she worked closely with, of course, the production designer and artistic director. But going through this process, I think we can examine exactly how her thinking went. But first of all, for the Stoker, the house was the main set for the movie. And so they had to look at it as a character, almost as an actor in the film. So the process started with the location manager searching the area and photographing uh, and then having show and tells of the director, DP, producer, production designer, and the set director. And so um, if the director designer saw some potential, then they physically went themselves to scout the location. And it had to be done because sometimes houses look fabulous in photographs and end up with all sorts of shooting problems and other technical issues that eliminate them on the set. So depending on the budget of the film, you can tell what sets will be on location, what sets they would have to build. And a lot of sets are relatively small rooms, and you have to build them because it's important to create the set for camera angles and lighting to give them the freedom to tell the story. But here with Stoker, um, after they found the house, uh, Leslie Morales and the set deck crew completely emptied it. And they made, more or less changed everything, transformed the whole look. They repainted the walls, changed the floors, the windows, the lighting, and maybe you can see here is a more of an art deco look. They selected the furniture and just transmogrified the geography of the house. Um, and so uh, as, as, they, as they developed it, it's like to tell the story, you need specific salient elements. So um, if you've got a character, like in the character this, who's the lead character here is India, um, India's father is an architect in the film, so they wanted a certain amount of architectural pieces that related to his profession so that it would fill out her character. And so they wanted distinct pieces. They didn't want to clutter everything up. So when you see this headboard in India's room as part of the exterior of the house, they didn't want a store-bought headboard. They wanted something really historical. They got from a facade of a Chicago building and it weighed a ton, but they still thought it was more effective because it spoke louder than a number of small pieces. It was a simple structure, and they did, in a sense, uh, more with less, even though it weighed a ton. And so as this production got going, Leslie consulted with the director on very specific issues dealing with imagery, symbolism, colors. They discussed the furniture styles from French art deco to modern pieces. Um, and how to fill out the room, given the theme this person wanted to have. So they would go looking for pieces at show showrooms, or they photographed them. When they uh, went to a, a different stores, they'd go online. They'd look all over the place. They went to buyers in New York. They pulled fabric samples from all over. And every day they met, uh, the, the production designer and her team met to discuss, discuss different options. And then they would take those options to the director a couple times a week, and the director would sign off on every piece of furniture, fabric, color, all wallpaper that accorded with his vision. Um, so, uh, for instance, there's a character in the movie, India's Mother, played by Nicole Kidman. And originally the bedroom was minimally dressed. And this shows you what happens in, the, in that kind of development of the movie as we roll along. Uh, the director came by one day and saw this giant flower arrangement. And, and he said, told Nicole, um, uh, he didn't know, not Nicole, but he told Leslie, Morales said that he wanted the room to suddenly turn into a jungle. So she had to transform this room uh, into a, a plant, a uh, planted overgrowth, of, you know, just overgrowth of plants and confusion just to make it more jungly to give the look the, the director wanted. And you can see here, it looks highly polished and wood, but now without the plants, it adds something in there, almost like a sort of um, overgrowth contrast here, an overripe feeling to the movie that the director wanted. Here, um, in this kitchen scene, they wanted one prop and one, one set deck item to really uh, give the sense of timelessness to the scene. And so they, they found this radio that turned out it was, it was a collector's item. It was worth more than $50,000. But they wanted the look of it. So what they did is they, they, they took this collector's item, they rented it, but they thought it was so important just to have that piece in the kitchen to tell the story 
that uh, they, they thought that it, it conveyed exactly what the director wanted. So that's what you do as a set deck. You look for certain items that say so much more than anything else. Here, they also wanted this feeling of uh, the India character being this kind of Alice, of, Alice in Wonderland, other, or other, other worldliness in her own loneliness. And, and she's surrounded by these shoe boxes here. They all have the same kind of subtle shoe in them, but it, it is it's this, this horseshoe of shoes in this golden headboard. Gives you a sense of her separation from the world with the tilted camera angle and everything. In this piece here, um, they also wanted her in this movie to feel like she's caged in a lot of scenes. So they interwove this green tape in the chain link fence because green was a motif, as you've seen in some of the other uh, photographs. Green was a motif in the movie. So she's not only behind a chain link fence, it's, it's got this green pattern. Now, no one really notices that in the movie. It's, it's a little strange, but it, it gives that thematic element that, that um, they wanted. And, and so, um, uh, Leslie Morales, and she talks about working in movies, and she likes it much better because um, you have so much more time to compose your scene as opposed to TV. Um, and she explains how in TV, most of the time, the camera shot's a medium close-up because you're shooting so much so quickly, you don't have time to compose elaborate set decoration. And so, they're totally two different mediums. And in, in, in TV, you hardly ever see a wide shot as you would in film. So because you see more wide shots in film and more camera angles, and because it's more complex the way the camera setup is, the design and decoration of sets has to follow that complexity in order to make uh, the movie work. Here, we can see how the camera setup and the lighting setup would never happen in, 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 a, in a TV show because this is... This is a really studied thing that no one would have time for. And the reason why is because in TV, you're shooting a different episode every week. And so you're talking about five, four or five writers on every episode of creating characters for that, that week's episode. And, and they're consulting with the designer and decorator, but they don't have much they can actually develop in that short period of time. So that's why TV isn't a director's medium. It's a writer's medium because there's a different director every week. For every episode in TV where uh, uh, the writers are consistent, there's the same writers throughout the show. So you can see film is a director's medium, TV is a writer's medium. That's the, that's the through line, the controlling person. Here uh, we have uh, Morales setting up a scene here where the, where the furniture alone separates a character from us. And, and it's, it's a nice setup of, of the devil eggs scattered all over it. She's hidden behind eggs. Not hidden behind eggs, but she's, it's almost like she's struggling with these objects. A, a separate world. This is Alice in a wonderland that's crumbling. And here we have, once you've established the set decoration really well, you got your saddle shoes, and you can do insert shots that depict a lot more once we become com comfortable with our decoration. So I'm going to shift over here to a more fantasy-prone um, set decoration. Here we, we've got a movie called Snow White and the Huntsman, and here set deck isn't going to do the realistic uh, look of what we just look what we just saw in in, this, in, in Stoker. We're we're looking at a fantasy that's based on a medieval myth, and so here we have very simple set deck items. We got the diaphanous curtains, single candle glinting against the green glass, but pouring light through the windows, so everything seems golden. The golden hair, the the the, the drapery, everything is making it look almost ephemeral. Whereas when we go into the bedroom here, it's a little more down to earth and it's it's a it's just a, a scattered items quickly gives us the picture. We got the bearskin rug. We get, so the rugs are animal skins. We got the chamber pot. We've got the 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 chandelier is actually candles and and the overhang of the of the bed, the canopy bed, very medieval, very quickly done. We understand immediately that we're in that time period. And when working on these period projects like Snow White, we can see that it's the set deck people placing the right objects here in this person's tent that give us this idea of adventure. We have the maps. They have to be scrolled upright. We have the, we have the chests that are going to be traveling. We have all these items that give us a feeling that there's going to be an adventure. And in the mill, where we build all these things, in the, in the uh, studio, we call it the art department mill, we, we build the the tables, and then we distress them with the dark paint sanded down to make it look uh, 
medieval and heavy and preponderant. We also have to do the research here. If we're going to do heraldry for the horses, we design the different look we want, and then we choose, we let the director choose a certain uh, heraldry for the horses that are going to be armored, and then we develop it and put it on the horse, and suddenly the fantasy comes to life. Here we have armor for the horses that we've researched through history, and then we develop it in our mill in the art department. And if we want a fantastical effect, we create things like this, the fiery symbol that will be put in the alcove against the, 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 the torches to give a real dramatic effect, but it's set deck that creates this symbolic burst of gold. And then finally, when we hit the river, and we've got to have that transient kind of architecture of people fleeing, we build those shanties and those seaside uh, tents and docks. We, we built right into the river here, and we can see a gentleman who is uh, guiding uh, the boat for the film here, and we can see the boat's made out of a kind of animal skin look. But set deck puts all this together. They build all this. They create all this. And so you can see behind the fantasy that's making it look real, the set decorators get to travel back in time and give us a world that actually never existed but looks very real.